Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to leave this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk in what I do, you have got to be faithful. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus. This answer means you broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scale. Oh, I tell you, man, the word of God is delicious. And, and you, you've got to continue to hunger and thirst after truth. God will fill you with truth. Jesus taught this. Jesus said this. And Jesus did on that cross. The power of God. The power of the cross. Sure, there's power in the resurrection. That justified us. But you can't see how to live his love from the resurrection. You see his power. But on that cross, you see how the Lord loved us. And we, we teach it on the words of eternal life. Like, I got some things I need to teach today and then tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, Jesus said in John 6, 63, it's the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are like them, them words. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, will you also go away? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Do you really know that every day? That producing Jesus' words produces the life and the quality that God himself is? That's how Jesus produced it. He only spoke what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw the Father do. You and I can speak what we hear Jesus say and do what we see Jesus do and produce him every day. Amen. Amen. And so here we see that Jesus, you have the words. See, every time you get in a test and trial, Jesus, you got the words. I, I'm not going over here to worry. I'm not going over here to stress. I'm not going over here and staying in trouble. No, be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome this world. That's the words of eternal life. He's deprived this whole world of power to harm us. He's conquered everything. Every toxin, every fear, every disease, every sickness, every poverty, every lack, every weakness, every struggle. Jesus defeated every one of them. Hallelujah. And that's good news. Now, listen carefully at this. Uh, I want to go to 1 Timothy. And I want to teach on this next couple of days. Chapter 6, 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12. Well, let, let, me, let me read uh, verse uh, 8. And having food and raiment, let us there, there would be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. See, God needs to make you rich. Not you try to get rich. It's a big difference. So you seek the Lord to show you what to do. You know, Jesus told the rich young ruler, uh, you know, go go give everything you have to the poor. That was rough on him. He left sorrowful. <laughs> then Jesus said, you'll have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. And so you, you can't follow Jesus when something else got your heart. You follow Jesus when you hear his words and you obey what he tell you to do. And so they that would be rich will fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, that is the root of all evil. Boy, I'm telling y'all. Which some coveted after they have erred from the words of Jesus. See, faith is the words of Jesus. Faith is the words of Jesus. Faith is hearing the words. 
Faith works by the love of Jesus. Faith comes by the words of Jesus. Faith lives by the words of Jesus. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Now God ain't doing that to them. <clears throat> now here you see, but thou, O oh man of God, O oh woman of God, I got a word from the Lord for you. Flee these things. Flee them. Man, I have ever since June 30, 1988. I just ain't went after money. It ain't going after it. Follow after righteousness. And God's blessed me too. Godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Follow these. Then verse 12. Now here's what I want you to get to. Fight the good fight of faith. See, the good fight of faith is fighting to live in the character of God. So you can't know about righteousness unless the word tell you. See, that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we would be made <laughs> the righteous of God in him, that we would have the right to all God's blessings. They come through words, the words of eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Here it is. Here's how you do it. When, when you fight a good fight, you are fighting with, with, with believing the words that come from Jesus' lips, which is the word of God. You're fighting a good fight of faith by laying hold on eternal life. That's how you fight. You lay hold on the words of eternal life. That's how you fight a good fight of faith. Where to thou called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And so many Christians <laughs> don't, don't understand this thing. And, and y'all need to listen to me now so I can explain it. I'm not in no fight with the devil. And he's my enemy. Saints, I am fighting to believe. I'm fighting to hold fast to the words that Jesus spoke. I, I, I'm fighting to allow the Holy Spirit to, to teach me all things or bring back to my remembrance whatever Jesus done said to me. And if Jesus hadn't taught me in this area, then I've got to seek him for the Holy Spirit to bring me and teach me the words that I need to speak in this situation so that I can bring Jesus in that situation and live his victory through the words of eternal life. And this is not hard. It just feels hard sometimes because Satan is putting so much pressure on us at times to make us feel like you know, that we're losing in this. He used to do this to me years ago, and he can't do it no more. And and uh, and the reason why Jesus took me in a vision. And and this was this was back in, in, in the early 90s. In this vision, I was I was uh, in this warehouse, and I was sitting in this chair. It was in one chair, great big old warehouse, and it was one chair right in the middle. I was sitting in that chair. <laughs> and on the outside was, was snakes. And man, they were trying to tear the dough down. They were trying to tear the walls down. They were doing their best trying to get in. And, and I, I felt afraid. And Jesus said to me, he says, they're trying. Never let them try ever move you because I'm keeping you. So I learned that pressure is from the devil. It doesn't mean nothing. When the Lord be for us, who could be against us? Jesus told me, when I'm keeping you, they can't come in and rule you. Did you get that? And and, and I, I learned <laughs> in another vision I had back in 19... In the 90s. This was early 90s. I had fought and fought and fought 
I had stood on the word. I stood on the blood of Jesus. I stood on the name. And I'm telling y'all, them devils was whooping me. I, I, I just, just kept speaking the word. I kept staying with the blood. I kept, And I mean, it seemed like to me that I wasn't winning. So Jesus took me to another vision. This vision, me and Jesus was up in the left corner of this room. And, 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 and we was up high. And down at the bottom, I, I didn't see Satan's face. When Satan was there, his, his, his face was turned away from me, me and Jesus up in the corner. And sitting at this table was three demons who had been assigned to come and attack my life. And every one of them, man, I'm telling you, they have been bringing thoughts to my mind for years. And and, and the first one uh, uh, said, uh, get, get back down there and attack Robert Scales. And, and, and this is what that demon said to Satan. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. He's always quoting the word. Send somebody else. And, 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 and then, then he went to the second said, Get back down there and attack Robert Scare. He said, I don't want to go either. He said, he's always talking about the blood of Jesus in the name. He's always taking that name and rebuking me. I don't want to go. And then, the, then he went to the third demon and said, get back down there and get out the robber's scales. He said, I don't want to go either. He's always praising the Lord. He sings all the time to Jesus. I hate that. And I was looking and Jesus taught me something. I pray you learn from it too. He says, no matter what it feel like, no matter what it look like, when you're trusting me, it's a working. Ooh, 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 ooh. When I came back, I really believed it was working. When nothing in me felt like I'm telling you, I won, I'll tell you, I won victory after victory after victory. I was winning them before. But I got stuck because I was trying to feel the victory. See, and he didn't want me to feel it. He wanted me to believe it, that his word was working, that his love was working, that his authority was working. No matter how I felt. No matter how I felt. His word was working. Saints, I'm telling y'all, when you fight a good fight of faith, it's a good fight because Jesus already done won it. And the good fight really is you standing on the word and speaking Jesus' words until you see the final result. Staying in thanksgiving. What things soever, Mark 11, 24, you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you'll have. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against it, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you. But if you do not forgive, Neither will, Jesus said, my father, which is in heaven, neither will he forgive you. And see, he won't forgive you in answering your prayer. We know he died and took our sins away on the cross. But what Jesus would teach him, you won't get to walk in. And you won't need any dumb preacher ought to know when you end up forgiveness, your faith is not going to work right. Well, this is not for the church. The preacher preached that not long ago. Said Jesus was talking to the Jews. He said, "This ain't for the church." Mark eleven. I said, "Well, then 24, 23 ain't for the church." Saints, Jesus was teaching: have faith in God, have the faith of God, have the God kind of faith. Very, very, I say unto you. Whosoever say unto this mountain, be thy removed, and be thy cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say will come to pass. Jesus said, you'll have whatever you say. And what things, soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that you take them, and you'll have them. And then, then Jesus, went, when you stand praying, now, see, when you start, you're speaking, you're believing. He said, you have to be living in this love on the cross. 
that eternal life will not work when you're in the wrong spirit. Amen. A little leaven, leaven at this whole look. And so, so saints understand Jesus was talking to the church. And ain't no way in the world he's talking to no Jews. Because, and I'm going to tell you why he wasn't talking to the Jews. And Jesus told me this. It, it, it ain't no way in the Old Testament where he ever commanded them to forgive and walk in love. When they stand praying for gifts. If that was for the Old Testament, it would have been written back there somewhere. When you stand praying for gifts. That's for the church. He even tells fathers and husbands in 1 Peter 3, 7. Husband, love your wife. He says uh, that you both are, are, are partakers of the grace of life. That, and, and he said that your prayers be not hindered and cut off. And so that's the same teaching Jesus was teaching, but he taught it to everybody. He ain't going to answer no white prayers when she don't walk in love. And so I'm telling y'all, boy, they need to quit, they need to quit teaching this stuff. It's crazy. There are some things Jesus taught. But when, when, he, when he taught law, he said it. This is the law of Moses. So you know it's the, it's the law of Moses. The Ten Commandments. He said, these are the laws and prophets. Love God with your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, say all the laws and prophets, they don't, they don't hang Jesus. There's no Jesus in them. But the new commandment, John 13, 34, to love one another as Jesus loved you, demands you to have to believe in Jesus before you can go live it. And so therefore, that's for the church. Everything in the in the in in the in the gospels in the New Testament has to point you to Jesus on the cross. If it don't point you to Jesus on the cross, it's not for the church. Amen. And so when you fight the good fight of faith, you're fighting to believe the victory that our Lord Jesus has won over Satan, over sin, over darkness over addictions, over habits, over poverty, over life. Listen, I tell that spirit of poverty every day. I say, I bind the spirit of Antichrist. I command you to take your hands off my money. See, God ain't holding my money back. God, man, he's in heaven. Satan's the God of this world. He will hold Christian money back, man. He wants the world to have all the money so they can keep all these crazy channels on TV keep just flooding people with colorness and darkness, all these these competition things. And then they had a nerd to bring that stuff to Christian television. We're going to have a competition, see which one of y'all can sing the best. That is garbage. Hurting your brothers and sisters. Putting them in a position where they trying to get some money. And, and, and it ain't God blessing them either. I don't know what it is. He might do it out there in the world, but I'm telling you, he is not going to have his children fighting against one another, trying to get blessed. No, he's not going to do it. Amen. It ain't the nature of God. So, so when you fight the good fight of faith, you lay hold of the eternal life, the quality of life that's in Christ Jesus. And how do you lay hold of each other? You got to lay hold of his words. You got to lay hold of his word. You, you look in, in Acts 18. Peter, I mean, the apostle Paul was, was over there at the Corinthian church. Um, and and, and, and Cephas, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. And listen, listen to this. Then spake the Lord to Paul in, in the night by vision. Be not afraid. See, what is that? That's eternal life. Man, those words have the quality of God. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's eternal life talking. You got to put those words in your mouth. 
God do not want his children being troubled about nothing, but we know trouble's coming. But you don't have to stay in it. He said, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. <laughs> Listen to what Jesus said. Here's eternal life. For I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And so, see, and, and I've, watched, I've been to six countries and preached and people put long machetes out on me, guns on me, said they're going to kill me if I don't quit preaching Jesus. And the power of God will come on me. Jesus would, would I, I'd pray all night sometimes. All night. Nine, nine thirty to five, six in the morning. And Jesus would finally speak to me and say, go, tell them what I told you and don't be afraid. I'm with you. Man, I, I wouldn't sleep. Well, what is that, Pastor? Words of eternal life. Every time you get faced with any situation, you need the words of eternal life. Either written or what the Spirit speak to you straight from the Lord Jesus. Saints, I'm telling y'all, Jesus' words work every single day. Now, let me get ready to close. In John 11, verse 20, uh, Martha, and you know Martha, and one, some of the greatest <laughs> words of eternal life, you, you started really in John 11, verse Verse 1, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Martha which anointed the Lord with ornament and wiped his feet with a hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now I'm going to show you what they told Jesus. Therefore, a sister said unto him, said, Lord, behold, behold, whom thou lovest is sick. See? Now, they had, they, they were speaking eternal life here. Listen, always go to the Lord that he loves you. Always go to the Lord that he loved you on the cross. He took your sins away. While you were yet a sinner, Christ died. But he died for what? Took your sins away. Made you righteous. He, 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 listen, say, he has acquitted you. And 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 uh, they they knew they knew what to get Jesus to move be moved by was he loved us. I'm telling y'all, it'll move him today. I have prayed thousands of times. Lord, show them you love him. <laughs> show them you love him. <laughs> because Jesus really wants the whole world to know that. God loves the world as much as he loved Jesus. Then John 17. Go read it. And Jesus told Martha, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said, Thy brother shall rise again. Ma said unto him, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and life. Oh, there, there it is again. So Jesus said, I'm that life. I am the words that come from God. I am the quality and the character and the authority of God to bring to you all from heaven. He is saints. Hallelujah. Thank God he is. And he said, I'm the resurrected life. <laughs> now listen to these words in closing. I'll pick this back up tomorrow. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Shall he live. He said, when you believe in him, that he's the resurrection and the words, he's the power to bring something out of something and he is the life and quality through the words he speak. He told her, if you believe in me, though you were dead, yet shall he live. Then he goes and says, whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this mother. And then she missed it. She said, yeah, Lord, I believe you're the Christ, the son of God. But what she left out of Christ 
and the Son of God was Jesus got the words of eternal life. And if he say, move the stone, get ready. Get ready. If Jesus tell you to move a stone, because he get ready to do something great. Do what? Do the words he speak, a spirit, their life, they're from the Father. I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow I'm going to pray with you all. <clears throat> I want to make a baby you this six city series, The Words of Eternal Life. Well, love, get the $30. Also, I'll give you the, the, uh, my, this little book, The Believer's Guide to Christ. For love, give a $30 or more. And ask for that book. I, I, I'll send it to you. Um, for love, give $30 or more. Make your checks among the orders to Jesus is at some ministries. Post office box 292. 112 Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Also, you can go to robertscalesministry.org. You can order these with your credit card. I tell you, go look at our catalog. Look at all the things we have in our bookstore. They're online. robertscalesministry.org. They'll be a blessing to you. And to order these, woo! Man, you'll cherish them. You'll probably give them to somebody else. <laughs> and then they have to get you another one. Because they're not going to give them back. Also, I want to invite y'all to Jesus. This answer church, the church that's alive, it's worth the drive. And uh, saints, our service times, Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Sundays, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service. We have nursery. We have a children's church. My son is the youth pastor. Uh, he ministers to the youth. And uh, we, we really teach consecration and uh, teach our young people how to live holy sanctified that they're different and we teach the men and the girls to not have sex for marriage we teach how to make marriages glorious and a blessing so uh y'all come you can get the information on, on on our web or just look it up jesus is answered church you'll be so blessed to come also i want to Thank my friends and partners. I tell you, man, without my friends and partners, we wouldn't be on TV. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. Many of y'all, God has blessed y'all. And so he's blessed you to be a blessing. So pray about helping us. And uh, we love you. Thank you so much for your wonderful gift. I just pray the Lord continue to prosper you in every way in Jesus' name. Well, my time is up, son. My prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus Answer Ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Smith. Remember that, how Christ loved you on the cross. Go live that love toward everybody and have a blessed day in Jesus. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.